Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to explore whether the button video creator should opt towards the 16 to 35 mm zoom or the 24 to 70 mm zoom. The 16 to 35 mm f.28 and the 24 to 70 mm 2.8 is two thirds of the holy trinity that more or less every manufacturer produces, the other being the 70 to 200 2.8. And because they cover a wide variety of focal lengths, they're fast and have excellent build quality, they've become a favorite with photographers who perhaps would prefer a set of zooms instead of a dedicated series of prime lenses, which would be a lot more lenses. Or uh, of course, a set of prime lenses is gonna be a lot more expensive. Now on the topic of affordability, these lenses, because of their quality, their build, you're going to be looking at $1,500 to $2,000 minimum just for the one lens. So with that, which one should we opt towards the 16 to 35 or the 24 to 70? I'm primarily a prime lens user when it comes to video. I prefer that extra sharpness that comes with the prime glass. But late 2019, I approached landscape photography with more enthusiasm and I picked up the 16 to 35 and the 24 to 70 for my photos. And while I had no intention on using the glass for video, the versatility and proficiency of carrying glass lenses was preferred for some video shoots. For landscape photos, the more expensive 16 to 35 mm f 2.8 is the perfect lens for extenuating the scenic imagery. But many will state that the wider end of that focal range is more specialized than your everyday focal length and only to be used in certain situations. I love to use it for my video content. I live in quite a scenic location and I tend to emphasize the location more so than the subject, but there are quite a number of limitations when using it for video. Many don't really realize how wide 16 mm is on a full frame camera. As to why it costs more, it's down to the engineering to make sure there is no severe distortion at this wide of a focal length. Take this shot at 24 millimeters from the 24 to 70. It's a wide shot. It could easily be used as an establishing shot. However, when we reduce to 16, we can see the extremity of the wide angle. We're quite literally getting the left to right corner of the structure of the ruins in the shot, which sometimes doesn't feel as quite natural. And often any focal length significantly wider than the human eye almost presents an element of the abstract. But in a landscape photograph, obtaining this kind of angle of view is often preferred. On the topic of angle of view, it should be noted that the 16 to 35 also makes the excellent choice for gimbal work because it has a wide focusing distance. So let's just say that you're on a gimbal with a camera that has less than power autofocus, which is pretty much every brand except for Sony at this point in time. And at a longer focal length, you're going to have trouble hitting that focus point as you're moving through the composition. Maybe focus breathing, hitting the mark altogether, whatever that may be, you're just not finding it. And of course, unless you've set up a follow focus system, you can't manually focus the lens because it's going to throw the balance out of whack. Now, what you could do with a wide angle lens is set it towards, say, 16 to 20 millimeter, set the focus to infinity. And as you move throughout the scene, you can move freely like a Terence Malick movie with no elements dropping in and out of focus. Focus and distance is simply the depth of field. It's typically controlled by the aperture to maximize and minimize the depth of field. However, the focal length will also play an important factor. The website Cambridge in Color is a wonderful resource for both practical and technical applications, and often they can get quite scientific. And in this blog article, they present the distribution of the rear and frontal depth of field and you can see that a wide angle has more rear distribution, meaning that if appropriately focused, by the time the image falls out of focus on the horizon, it looks completely natural. Which means when using a wide angle lens on a gimbal, the only elements that will start to drop out of focus are in the far distance. It's also important to note that at 16 to 18 millimeters, your typical variable ND filter will often produce a form of vignetting. Here at 24 millimeters, it's not noticeable, but when we revert to 16, we can now see that darkened area of the image. And when we reduce the variable ND even further, we can see the effects are more extreme, which isn't going to be practical if you're filming at 2.8 in strong sunlight. So we've talked a lot about the 16 to 35, and now let's look at some of the merits of the 24 to 70 millimeter. Running from Cambridge in Colors information, we can see that with the increase in focal length, the depth of field window becomes increasingly narrow, regardless of your aperture. 
And I think this is an important aspect to consider for those who are looking to create short form narrative video content, because even though there are numerous elements that go into creating the film look or the cinematic look, it's undeniable that a shallow depth of field will certainly add to it. Take these two shots. The first one is at 20 millimeters. There's nothing inherently wrong, it's fine. But if you lack in other production elements such as lights, costumes, and everything else that makes that film look, when we punch into 50 millimeters and have that shallow depth of field separate the actor from the background, it promotes a better sense of the film look. The visual language of filmmaking is told through the angle of view presented on screen, and a number of core shots can only be acquired with specific focal lengths. And you can pretty much form all of them through the focal lengths found within the 24 to 70 millimeter focal range, from establishing shots, mid shots, and even to extreme close ups. On the topic of camera placement, the increase in focal length will also dictate where you position your camera to frame a mid shot. And of course, the further you move back as you increase the focal length, the more compressed the background becomes. As such, shooting from 50 to 70 is an excellent way to isolate your subject from the background. Of course, what you think looks better is subjective, but it's important to note that the wider the focal length, the more accentuated the image will appear, and this may cause your subject to look unflattering, whereas 50 to 70 millimeter, it starts to accurately photograph the face. So let's summarize. For mostly landscape and city shots, you're gonna to wanna to opt towards the 16 to 35 millimeter. With that versatility of a wide focal range, you're gonna be able to get in a lot of landscape and it also has that sweet shot of 35 millimeters for conversational scenes if you ever encounter them. But for mostly people, you're gonna to wanna to look towards the 24 to 70. Now you got the wide end of the 24, so you can still get in landscape shots, but then for narrative and conversational scenes, you can punch in tighter for the dialogue. So this has been Lewis with Shutterstock Tutorials. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I will catch you guys next time.